Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Zach. And today, we're diving into the fascinating world of the Linux command line. Whether you're a complete beginner or just looking to brush up on your skills, this video is for you, so let's get started. First things first, what is the command line? Simply put, it's a text-based interface that allows you to interact with your computer Instead of clicking on icons and menus, you type commands to perform tasks. This might sound intimidating, but don't worry, Fuller, we'll start with the basics. To begin, let's open the terminal. Depending on your Linux distribution, you might find it in different places. For Ubuntu users, you can press Ctrl-3 plus Alt plus T or search for terminal in the Applications menu. If you're using another distro like Fedora or Arch, the process is similar. Now that we have the terminal open, let's try some basic commands. These commands are universal across most Linux distributions. The first command is PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. Uh, this command shows you the current directory you're in. When you type PWD into the command line, and press enter, it displays the full path of the current directory you're in. This helps you confirm your current location within the file system, which is especially useful when navigating through different directories. This output indicates that I am currently in the Zach directory, which is inside the home directory. To navigate through directories, we use the cd command, which stands for change directory. For example, to move into the home directory, you would type cd home and press enter. In Linux, the home directory is a personal directory assigned to each user on the system. It is where users store their personal files, configurations, and directories. Each user has their own separate home directory to keep their data isolated from other users on the same system. The home directory is located within the home directory and is named after the user's username. For example, my username is Zach, so my home directory is forward slash home, another forward slash, and then Zach. In Linux, for example, if you open a terminal and type just CD and press enter, you'll be taken to your home directory. The who am I command in Linux displays the username of the currently logged in user. It's a simple and straightforward command that outputs your current user identity, which can be useful for verifying which user account you're operating under, especially when working in environments with multiple users or when you have switched users using commands like sudo. This output here indicates that the current user logged into the terminal session is Zach. Next, let's list the files and directories in our current location using the ls command. Just type ls and hit enter. This command displays everything in your current directory in Linux and other Unix-like operating systems, paths are used to specify the location of files and directories in the file system. There are two types of paths, relative and absolute. A relative path specifies the location of a file or directory in relation to the current working directory. It does not start with a slash. Instead, it starts with a directory name like desktop here. Relative paths are useful for navigating within the file system without needing to specify the full path every time. Like desktop, here it is within the home directory as shown by the ls command. An absolute path provides the complete path to a file or directory from the root directory. Regardless of the current working directory, it always starts with a slash, which represents the root directory. No matter where you are, 
in the file system using an absolute path will always lead you to the specified location. The command cd forward slash in Linux changes the current working directory to the root directory. The root directory is the topmost directory in the file system hierarchy and is denoted by a single forward slash. When you execute cd forward slash, you are moving to the starting point of the entire file system where all other directories and files branch out from. From the root directory, you can then navigate to any other directory in the file system using either absolute or relative paths. Let us now look at how to create folders on Linux. Let us create a folder on the desktop. To create a folder on the desktop in Linux, you can use the mkdr command, which stands for make directory. Use the cd command to change the directory to the desktop, or you can just use an absolute path. So I will create a folder called files on the desktop. Let us create some folders inside the files folder. This command will create three new subdirectories inside our folder. This command is used to create a directory and any necessary parent directories specified in the path. The P option tells make directory to create parent directories as needed. If any of the directories in the specified path don't exist, they will be created. This command is particularly useful when you want to create a deep directory structure in one step without having to create each directory individually. It saves time and ensures that all necessary parent directories are created automatically. This command make directory folder one will create a directory named folder one in the current working directory. Uh, the double quotes are necessary because the directory name contains a space. So if there are spaces, add the double quotes or single quotes in Unix-like operating systems. Spaces in file names and directory names can cause issues if not handled properly. The shell interprets spaces as argument separators. So Without the quotes, it would think folder and one are two separate arguments. By, by enclosing the name in double quotes, you ensure that the shell treats the entire string folder one as a single argument. Let's move on to creating and managing files. Let us create a new file in the accounts folder. To create a new file, we can use the touch command followed by the file name. cat command in Linux is typically used to display the contents of a file, but it can also be used to create a file 
and input text into it. Here's how you can use the cat command to create a new file. Let us learn how to add text to a file using the cat command. Before we do that, let us check if the file has any text written to it. As you can see, there is no text written to it. Let us add some text using the cat command, and this is how you do it. The hello world text has been added to the file. To append text to an existing file, use the, the two greater than signs. Uh, this will append the text. This is a new line to the end of the file. Let's now look at how to move and manipulate files. Uh, with a few files created, We'll explore some everyday tasks you might need to perform on them while you might usually use a graphical program to move, rename, or delete a few files. Knowing how to do this from the command line is handy for bulk changes or when dealing with files spread across different folders. And plus, you'll pick up more command line skills along the way. This is the format you use when moving a file from one folder to another. So this command will move the ABC file from the accounts folder to the desktop. If you want to move multiple files, this is the format you use. To copy a file, instead of moving it, use the cp command. To delete a file, you can use the remove command rm. This command also changes the current working directory to the root directory in Linux and other Unix-like operating systems. Let us now see how to remove a directory. The remove directory command in Linux is used to remove empty directories. If the directory contains any files or subdirectories, the command will not work and will return an error. Add the dash R option when removing a folder with content. The man command in Linux is used to display the manual pages for other commands, utilities, and functions available on the system. The man command is an essential tool for Linux users, providing comprehensive documentation on commands and utilities directly from the terminal. It's a valuable resource for both beginners and experienced users 
to understand and make the most of the available commands. The nano command in Linux opens the nano text editor, a simple, easy to use text editor for the command line. Nano is designed to be intuitive and straightforward, making it a popular choice for both new and experienced users who need to edit text files directly from the terminal. Press Ctrl and X, then save the file to exit. Let us also look at two essential commands for the popular Ubuntu operating system or any Debian-based system. The command sudo apt update is used in Debian-based Linux distributions such as Ubuntu to update the package index. The package index is a database that contains information about the packages available from the repositories that are configured on your system. The command connects to the repositories listed in your system sources list and fetches the latest package information. The fetched information is used to update the local package index, ensuring that your system knows about the latest available versions of packages and their dependencies. Regularly running sudo apt update ensures that your package index is current, which is crucial for Installing new software. When you install new packages, the package manager needs up-to-date information about available versions and dependencies. Upgrading existing packages. Before upgrading installed packages with sudo apt you know, upgrade, you should update the package index to ensure you get the latest versions. Security. Keeping the package index updated helps ensure you receive the latest security patches and updates for installed software. After updating the package index, you can upgrade all the installed packages to their latest available versions using sudo apt upgrade. The sudo apt upgrade command in Debian-based Linux distributions such as Ubuntu is used to upgrade all the installed packages uh, on the system to their latest versions. It compares the versions of installed packages with the latest available versions in the repositories after the package index has been updated using sudo apt update and then upgrades the packages accordingly. It is a crucial command for maintaining the health and security of a Debian-based Linux system by ensuring all installed packages are updated to their latest versions. This command with two dots after CD is a simple yet powerful tool for navigating the file system in Unix-like operating systems. It allows you to quickly move up to the parent directory, making it easier to traverse directory structures and manage files and directories efficiently. The uh, Unaimed command is a versatile tool for retrieving system information in Unix-like operating systems by using various options. You can get detailed information about the kernel, machine hardware, and uh, operating system, which can be useful for system administration, troubleshooting, and understanding your system's configuration. The tar command in Unix-like operating systems is used to create, maintain, modify, and extract files from a tar archive. You can also compress these tar archives using various compression methods. Here's how you can use the tar command to compress files to create a compressed archive. You typically use the tar command uh, followed by specific options and uh, the names of the files or directories you want to include in the archive. Commonly used options are C, which means create a new archive. V for verbose mode, showing the progress in the terminal. F means specify the name of the archive file.
To extract a tar archive, you use the X option along with F option to specify the file. If the archive is compressed, you also include the relevant decompression option. The zip command in Unix-like operating systems is also used to create compressed archive files in the zip format. Zip files are widely used for compressing and packaging files and directories. To extract the contents of a zip file, you use the unzip command. Let us create a text file and then look at how the grep command works. The grep command in Unix-like operating systems is a powerful tool used for searching text or patterns within files. It stands for Global Regular Expression Print. Grep searches one or more input files for lines that match a given pattern and prints the matching lines. It supports regular expressions, which makes it a versatile tool for Pattern matching. The I option ignores case distinctions in patterns and data. We are searching for the word regular in a case insensitive manner. All these commands I have shown you, you can read more on them to learn more about them. To count the number of lines that match the pattern, you can use the C option. Let us also look at the SSH command is used to securely connect to a remote server or machine over a network using the secure shell protocol. SSH provides a secure channel over an unsecured network by using encryption for data transfer, making it a widely used tool for remote login and command execution. Enter the username and IP address of the remote machine to connect to it. The SSH command is a powerful and secure tool for remote access and administration. It provides various options for different use cases, including secure login, command execution, and port forwarding. By leveraging SSH, you can securely manage remote servers and execute tasks as if you were physically present at the machine. Let us also look at this config command. It is used in Unix-like 
Operating Systems for Network Interface Configuration. It stands for Interface Configuration. This command is typically used to configure, manage, and query the network settings of network interfaces. While it has been largely replaced by the IP command in many modern Linux distributions, it is still widely used and understood. It remains useful for basic network tasks and troubleshooting. Here it is displaying my wired network card, the loop back interface, and my wireless interface, and also shows the IP address being used. If you want to download files, you can use the wget uh, command. Uh, the wget command is a widely used utility in Unix-like operating systems for downloading files from the web. It supports downloading via HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP protocols. wget is non-interactive, meaning it can work in the background even after a user has logged out making it ideal for downloading large files or for use in scripts. The file command is a powerful utility for identifying file types in Unix-like operating systems. It uses a combination of magic numbers, file headers, and other heuristics to accurately determine the nature of a file. This command is especially useful for system administrators, developers, and anyone needing to quickly understand the contents or format of files. The hostname command is a simple yet essential tool for managing and displaying the hostname of a Unix-like system. Understanding and using this command is important for network management, scripting, and system administration tasks. The shutdown command is a crucial tool for system administrators, allowing them to control when and how a system is brought down. Create and manage files and more. Practice these commands to get comfortable and soon you'll be navigating the command line like a pro. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.